hello everyone welcome back to the new video so today in this video we'll be talking about this very interesting library that i found while scrolling my linkedin the other day and it was pandas ai so then i went ahead to see what it actually was and it looks like it's giving gen ai capability to your pandas data frame and you can kind of do a conversation with your data frame that's backed by openai api so you're kind of doing a chat with the data and then when i read through the github i was super impressed with the capability that they have demonstrated so so yeah i mean why not i just thought of creating a video and share it across with you guys in case you're not aware of this package but yeah just to note you need to have openai api for making all of this work so cool so installing this is as easy as doing pandas ai a pip install so they have a collab notebook as well so you just do this then they have a class that they have defined which is smart data frame you are getting an instance of data frame into which you can give out data from different sources it could be a simple csv it could be a pandas data frame that you loaded earlier maybe excel file google sheet so on and so forth cool so then they create a data frame by themselves that has two columns country and gdp these are the column values for country and their respective gdp values and then you have happiness index so let me run this cell as well these two yep okay i think i'll have to run all of that so let's start running it one by one from starting and i'll walk through each line that is being talked about and let's see how it goes cool so till here we have already seen like they have created a dummy data frame then they say you need to have your token cool so let me just pull up my token and paste it over here so let me just run this as well so it will create an object of openai that it will eventually use when you pass the data frame to it with the relevant question okay so now we pass in the data frame that we have created in this step along with the config where we are passing in the object of the llm and now we have so yeah one thing to note smart data frame has all the properties of how you would access anything and everything in the original data frame so for example if you're doing i want a country that is united states get me all the rows for this so so it's working as it is expected but the addition that you get which you don't get in normal pandas is that you can now chat with your data frame right so if you say return the top 10 countries by gdp it returns all those five countries so that is pretty interesting right so let's cross check this because um, let's see if that's correct or not so we have our df already loaded i guess yeah okay so we just need to sort our values for the column gdp with ascending equal to false because you want the largest value sorry because you want the largest value in the top and then we can simply do let's say head five so us china japan germany and united kingdom so yeah that's pretty good like all of them are correct so let's move on and see what's the next question that they chatted about which is what's the sum of gdp of the two unhappiest countries so it gave us some number that looks like correct because the values are pretty big so i mean we can cross check so let's do this however if you just see right if you they have a method called last code generated and this is what generated the answer for this so okay so if i understand this correctly probably you are sending out the string along with the data frame in some way and the output is essentially a code that we are asking the gpt to generate which we then anyways run in our python terminal right and that's probably the answer that you are seeing that could be one of the flows i'm not very sure to how if that's the way it's internally executing it but looks like because otherwise method called last code generated so yeah probably that's what's going on which is again interesting because it's not about you directly consuming the answer that you get you also get the code and that essentially helps you learn about how do you use different functions within pandas to get to this answer so it's also a good learning tool apart from just exploring and being wowed about right so yeah that's amazing okay so it also supports multiple data frames is what i can see so because it does a concatenation so this is a list of data frames so not only one probably so while doing the instance right you can pass in 
मे बी अ लिस्ट ऑफ डी एफ वन डी एफ टू सो ऑन एंड सो फोर दैन यू कैन इन पैरल डू क्वेश्चन आंसरिंग अक्रॉस मल्टीपल डेटा फ्रेम्स कूल सो दैट वॉज आई थिंक वॉट दे शोड अबाउट द एनालिसिस पार्ट लेट मी गो थ्रू द गेट हब एंड सी इफ दे हैव एनी मोर एग्जाम्पल्स we have seen this okay then they have chart so this is a yeah so they have this multiple data frame so let's say you have employees data salary data you create a data frame out of them you pass all of them to this who gets paid the most so let us first figure this one out which is 7000 which is the fourth id fourth id is marketing which is olivia so oh olivia gets paid the most which again is pretty good so they have a primary key which is employee id so as we saw right once you call this it first concatenates because it's essentially generating code at the back end right so the first step is to concatenate all the data frames that you get and you have your primary key so only one new column gets added which is salary against all these row entries and a, an amazing thing to notice over here is that it's adding a bit of emotions also to the way it's trying to answer things so okay so now if i look back again what i said was it's essentially generating a code and giving you the answer that is happening but the answer since it is a natural language it looks like internally the first step could be to generate code and maybe based on that again a gpt call or inherently in the same call we are trying to get to an answer that is more conversational so also i also in their call right in this data frame i was seeing the other day in one of the classes in the chat you have a parameter that says output type the default value is string but let me give let's say number or int what was the value let us just test and let's write a query so that we are expecting just one answer return the top one country by gdp cool okay it says actually Okay, it found out United States, but saying it's not a number. Cool, so that is also a good thing. So let me write a proper query to test the functionality. Turn the happiness index of top one country by GDP. Cool. So this should get us the value. So let's see. So we got a value to be six point nine four, which is a number and looks correct because the GDP is highest for United States. So is the happiness index. Okay, so let's move forward and see. what all other features do they support so they support making charts directly so if you write in let's say plot a chart of the gdp by country you will directly see the chart on your jupyter notebook which is crazy i guess right so i mean automating the matplotlib part is really cool i personally appreciate it so let's run through the last code that it generated for using which it essentially generated this beautiful graph so it essentially generated the entire code right you have return statements how it should look like you have all of this i mean yeah that's that's really impressive because with i mean with this you can get to learn a lot of stuff and especially the matplotlib part for which the api is little i mean it has a learning curve associated with it and similarly you can do for histograms you can sort them out and so on and so forth they also support doing pie charts okay then they have the concept of smart data lake wherein okay so in this you can put in multiple data frames not in smart data frame so with data lake you can have more than one data frames plugged in together and you can query all of them at once because essentially it's creating a single data frame at the back end okay or pd dot merge either of the things yeah okay so apart from this you can also then tweak into what kind of llm you are trying to use apart from open ai models they also support falcon and star coder you can just enter the api and you should be good to go they have support for lang chain they also have various connectors such as mysql postgres and you can directly just pass in the connector it need not be now the data frame that you are talking to you're just passing in the connector for the database you have a particular table for example i am loading payments and loans under these conditions and then i can just do a query on my sql database that i have not only that they also have yahoo finance connector that will pull in data for microsoft for the stock price and you can ask relevant questions as in what was the closing price and all of that so with this i mean this clearly opens a lot of possibilities wherein you have tabular data and with all the connectors and api support that they have given clearly you can go about building a really good application that understands all of what you're trying to write and and replying it to you in a form that you would understand as in you're kind of talking to a friend so i'll link 
both the notebook in the description make sure to check it out and if you like such content make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel also share it across with your friends to whosoever is interested in such content i'll meet you in the next one see ya